Hi Tappers. Today, I want to give you a very important tool. Receiving any kind of bad news can feel jarring and that can make it more difficult to be able to overcome it or to get yourself back to a better place. I'm going to show you the hidden layers that you're dealing with when you get bad news and how to release them so that you can then navigate your circumstances in the best way possible. This video was inspired by our community member, Steve. Steve reached out to see if there was anything that EFT might be able to do to assist his wife with an ominous diagnosis that he received. Receiving bad news that isn't directly about us but affects our lives because it's a loved one can actually have longer lasting and deeper impacts than if the bad news directly involves only us. Let's break that down a little bit to figure out why. For right now, we're going to set aside the obvious reasons of why it can be painful where there isn't an easy answer or no answer other than acceptance. And we're instead gonna focus on those hidden layers that I mentioned. Do you remember the four triggers which cause the brain to go into survival mode? As a reminder, they are when you feel threatened, alone, helpless, or violated. You only need one to go into survival mode, but all four of these could be triggered when you get the news of a loved one suffering that you can't alleviate. Now, here is my first important question for you. If this bad news shook you and took you to survival mode, what is your mode of survival? Our desired outcome from our survival mode is the same, to survive, but the way we choose to engage that survival mode is as unique and individualized as we are. There are some main categories that have been identified as far as what the survival mode can look like, fight, flight, freeze or fawn, and overwhelm, which is dissociation. But saying those words doesn't really make it clear in what way you're engaging your survival mode. I'll use myself as an example. I was triggered into a survival state at a very young age, when I realized that I was much smaller and not as strong as those around me. So I knew that fight wasn't an option for me. Neither was flight. I wasn't independent. I couldn't support myself. So I went to fawn, in other words, people pleasing. I learned to be able to uh, give the person what they wanted to a degree that kept me out of their bullseye. So then, how does people pleasing tie into being able to help a loved one? That's the thing, it doesn't. Our modes of survival don't always work and there likely isn't an immediate application for my survival mode in this either. So what do you think the brain is gonna do with that now? The brain is a highly complex neural network. It links similarities even in small things like can you think of another woman who has this style of hair and hair color? Likely if you've seen any or any famous ones that stick out in your mind, you were able to think of them immediately. So when you become hyper-focused in survival mode, it's highly likely that you are going to correlate events that have to do with the experience that you're currently having. Or in other words, in this instance, where your survival mode failed you. So now you have the weight and grief of this current event and potentially the weight and grief of dozens of other past events that didn't go the way that you wanted them to either. So what do you do to be able to function? I have two steps for you. First, you identify and then put down what isn't really directly in front of you right now. And two, you give yourself permission to feel and experience anything and everything. Let's use an EFT tool for each of these steps to help. To put something down or to set it away, Let's put it in a box. First, we need to discover what those are. We will do this with a bubble graph. Write down anything and everything that comes to your mind, even if it doesn't make sense. Next, we are going to simply ask, do I need to deal with this right now? If it's a no, we cross it out and we put it in the box. Now, we are clear on what is truly in front of us and we can raise all of that extra weight for now. Give yourself permission to process that later. Now, with what's left, we're gonna do what I call radical acceptance tapping. Not with the intention of getting over it, but with the intention of acknowledging every single little rant or tear that you feel and giving it a place 
to be expressed in a safe and supported environment. Here's what that could look like. I just can't believe this is happening. This, I can't, I don't even have words. I don't even have words for the way that I feel about this. I, I feel so violated and no, I can't make sense of it, but I don't care that I can't make sense. It hurts. And I, I, I want someone to explain this to me on how this, this is fair. It's not fair. And, and it, it just, <sighs> I feel so defeated. And I feel like it's my fault. I feel like somehow maybe I could have prevented this. I could have stopped this. I didn't try hard enough. I didn't, I didn't educate myself enough. I don't know what to do, even though I don't know what to do. I can take this first step in allowing myself to just express how I feel. Even if I don't believe it's going to do any good, I'll still do it. Because then at least it's not just trapped inside of my own body. Once you've done these two steps, you'll have a lot more mental space to be able to focus in on everything that's in front of you and where you actually want to put your attention. You can repeat these steps as often as you need to, as often as you want to. And there are times you might have to remind yourself that certain things are in the box and go put it back in there. That's okay. I hope this brings you some clarity and some support as you go through a difficult time. Please feel free to ask me questions or leave comments down below or send me an email, amanda at eftuniverse.com. I always answer them personally. Take care.